Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God of peace, you've taught us that in repentance and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading from the day comes from the book of Job. As for me, I would seek God, and to God I would commit my cause. God does great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. In famine, God will redeem you from death and in war from the power of the sword. You shall be hidden from the scourge of the tongue and you shall not fear destruction when it comes. At destruction and famine, you shall laugh and shall not fear the wild animals of the earth. For you shall be in league with the stones of the field and the wild animals shall be at peace with you. You shall know that your tent is safe and you shall inspect your fold and miss nothing. You shall know that your descendants will be many, and your offspring like the grass of the earth. You shall come to your grave in ripe old age, as a shock of grain comes up to the threshing floor in its season. See, we have searched the sound, it is true, hear and know it for yourself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading from the day comes from Paul's second epistle to the Corinthians. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God who reconciled us to God's self through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to God's own self, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making God's appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled to God. The the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I have said this to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all who you have given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Today we celebrate the life, the legacy, and ministry of Conrad Weiser. Uh, He was an 18th century American diplomat who worked for peace and reconciliation between the European settlers in Pennsylvania and uh, the native Americans of Pennsylvania. Uh, He was originally a a Lutheran and was the father-in-law of Henry Melchior uh, Muhlenberg, interestingly enough, whose saint's day is my own birthday, October the 7th. Uh, Born in Germany in in 1696, Conrad Weiser uh, immigrated to the United States as a child and at 17 uh, did a curious thing. He went to live among the Mohawks in New York in order to learn their language and culture. At the time, um, hardly anyone was able to converse even uh, at a cursory level with the Mohawks. And um, Conrad chose to not just settle for um, a limited interaction with the Mohawk, but to learn not only uh, their language at a level of fluency, but also their traditions, customs, and culture. Um, He later ended up making his way to southeastern Pennsylvania, where he learned the customs and language of the Iroquois as well. Um, Weiser eventually settled in the area that is now uh, the city of Reading, Pennsylvania, and um, 
Interestingly enough, he, des he designed the layout of that city of Reading and is numbered among the founders of Berks County and served for a long time as a local judge. Like many people of his time, um, he had to work at a variety of occupations to care for his family. So he was a farmer, a tanner, a merchant, a real estate speculator. Uh, for a long time, he was enamored with the Seventh-day Baptist movement and um, also was interested with the Moravian church as well. Um, his knowledge of the Iroquois language and his natural diplomatic gifts made him invaluable during the years of settlement. Um, he negotiated land deeds and other treaties, not only between American natives and European settlers, uh, but he also did diplomatic work between, between the various American native tribes and was often, uh, not always, but often successful in keeping peace among them. He was an advisor both to William Penn and Benjamin Franklin on matters related to American natives and played an important role in keeping the Iroquois sympathetic to the British during the French and Indian Wars. Um, at the time of Weiser's death, uh, an Iroquois leader was heard to remark, we're at a great loss and sit in darkness, as since his death we cannot so well understand one another. And uh, I think Weiser marks this opportunity uh, for us to really think about not just uh, speaking across apparent boundaries, be they race or age or ability, uh, sexual orientation, uh, even religious denominations and traditions, um, but not just to have the ability to express and, and convey concepts, but to fully uh, invest ourselves in one another so we can have not just tolerance, but respect so that we can cultivate appreciation for one another and do like Weiser did, be brokers of peace. Uh, the interesting thing about his tradition is that having understood people that, um, uh, that white settlers were afraid of, having fully understood them, he was able to broker peace. And so uh, he didn't look at the Mohawk or the Iroquois languages, cultures, and customs as items to master so that he could have power over those peoples, but uh, through his mastery of their language and his um, empathy through their culture and customs, he was able uh, to effect peace. And I am positive that is our call um, as Christian people today as we continue to follow Jesus. And um, this appreciation for one another as uh, foundational for the peacemaking that our nation needs so greatly, uh, hopefully um, you'll be inspired by the life and legacy of Conrad uh, Weiser to pursue. I invite you to join me now in the litany of healing, naming before God those for whom you offer your prayers and petitions silently or aloud. Loving God, throughout creation you show your will for all people is health and fullness of life. We praise you and we thank you, O Lord. Incarnate one who lives among us, in Jesus you came that all might have life and have it more abundantly. We praise you and we thank you, O Lord. Life-giving spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and we thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and we thank you, O Lord. Grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled in mind, body, or spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them compassion and wisdom, patience and skill. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bring to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. 
You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power among the peoples. With you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves and the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us and the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. The Almighty Lord, who has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith return to God, have compassion upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm you and strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and give you peace this day and forevermore. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.